two, one. Hello, hello, hello. First of all, I'd like to say, I feel good that I feel good. Feels good to feel good. When you deal with things in your life that make you feel less than good, it feels good to feel good. I don't know how many of you saw the upload that I did on temporary blindness. <clears throat> well, this is a follow up to the event that took place initially out of state in Texas. Then I got home and it happened again and again and again. Um, not as severe as the first time, but it did happen again. The first event with temporary blindness was I woke up in the morning completely blind in my right eye. If you go back and look at that video and you look closely, closely, closely at my eyes, you will notice a jelly-like overlay on my eyes. After I loaded the video, I said to myself, what, what is that? I'm like all in the camera like, what is that on my eyes? Okay. So, initially I did sleep on my fist and truly you can experience temporary blindness from sleeping on your fist or putting pressure on the socket. But I learned that it should only last for a few seconds and for me it was like three minutes, completely black. Then it came to white and then the vision came to black and white and then it came back. The next event, it was dull, meaning it was dark and dull. I couldn't see clearly. One eye's in HD, the other's dark and dull. And it continued to happen. So I went to a retina uh, specialist and I set up an appointment and I I'm so glad that I did. I bumped into this office on accident, but God makes no mistakes. He will get us where we need to be because he's that kind of God. Amen. So I went there and I got all kinds of testing on my eyes. It felt so good to have relief because basically my eyes have been extremely uncomfortable. Uncomfort they burn, they're weak, they're heavy, they're red, um, they're irritated, they hurt. They're weak, they're red, they're irritated, <laughs> heavy, strain and stress in the eye. And just to look across, um, during a conversation with the person right across from me, it was really uncomfortable. And it was challenging to focus on the conversation because I was so busy trying to clear my, my prism, you know, my scope, get a view, a clear view. Um, and it was becoming more and more next to impossible and further and further away. So after getting these tests, she, she noticed that I had floaters in my eyes. I had um, leakage behind my eyes, uh, which explains why I get tears sometimes on the side, more so on the right, which one, which is the one that hurts the most. Um, I, I'll do this, you know, and um, you might think it's allergies and we can't always just assume that we know what's going on. We really need to find out. Testing is wonderful. Um, so my eyes would tear or run a little, you know, just mild enough and I would just, you know, pat it with a nap and go, what's going on with me? I guess that's what happens. What, that's what happens when you get old. Cause I had a couple of aunts that eyes, their, their eyes would tear and I just, that's an old thing. I'm old now. I'll be 50 in October, but, um, nonetheless, leakage behind both eyes, floaters in both eyes and inflammation in both eyes, indicative of uveitis spelled U-V-E-I-T-I-S uveitis um, and it, it's caused by the sarcoidosis I knew that my eyes had been affected by sarcoidosis but you know if I can get this close enough for you to see take a look at that all that would be involved okay that's what makes the eye the eye that's what gives vision vision and when you have like pressure and inflammation in the eye it can definitely cause um, temporary blindness and it could lead to blindness overall and so I'm at the beginning um, stages of uveitis but this is the condition that I have and I'm having this discussion with you today to tell you this if your eyes hurt if there's pressure in your eyes if they strain if they are running if they're doing anything other than performing the way God created them to perform for you to see, see clearly and, and without pain and strain, other than visual issues that glasses corrective um, treatment takes care of, glasses or lenses, see your ophthalmologist, someone that goes deeper. And in my case, again, I stumbled upon a retina specialist, someone that goes even deeper than that, you know. So 
um, don't take for granted your vision. Don't ever just assume it's nothing and don't do things like Google stuff and diagnose yourself when you don't have the machines to see what's going on behind the scenes, behind the eye, behind the eardrum, you know, deep down in, in the digestive tract, you know, in the colon, whatever, wherever your issues are, you know, um, you know your body the best. So the knowledge that you have, that intimate knowledge you have of yourself will be instrumental in helping whomever you see to properly diagnose what's going on and you monitoring everything along the way sometimes it could be off it could be a little wrong you can help them and guide them into the right prognosis because they have knowledge and you have knowledge and they practice medicine and they have studied medicine and you practice you and you have studied you and come together and kaboom healing begins you know so uh there were three different ways to treat this one with um steroid injections into the eye the other with a stent and then with these really aggressive uh steroidal drops which is where we're beginning you know um instantly i had hd vision in the left eye like i already had the strain over there but most of the pain is in the right eye the right eye is improving the left eye is doing great um I'm st I still had some little dim episodes, not as bad, but it, it's only been a week. And in all things, you got to give it time. You got to give yourself time. You got to support your system. So for me, I know that sarcoid is the underlying underdog or the super dog or whatever you want to call it. Um, so treating yourself and your conditions will help alleviate uh, where it shows up. So the next thing to do is for me to continue to approach this from a holistic perspective, but backing up off of meats, backing up off of sugars, even more. I heard that there's a diet called the paleo diet. I don't know anything about it. I'm going to be researching it today because like I said, I'm going to be 50 in October and you know, things are changing. My knees hurt. Well, my right knee. It's so funny how everything's happening on my right side. My right shoulder, my right knee, my right eye, you know. It's both eyes, but more so on the right. Um, I feel the pain. I want my vision. I want my health. I want my life. I want my strength. And I'm speaking life over my entire being, you know. Speaking life over my vision. It's scary and it's disheartening and it's stressful to open your eyes and see nothing and I don't want that to ever happen to you if your eye is not feeling like its usual self go see a doctor and now see the thing is I had an eye doctor that didn't pick up on any of that stuff with the standard testing because of the temporary blindness, they went further. A lot of times insurance companies won't support further testing. But if you're experiencing blurred vision, and blurred, I forgot to mention that blurred vision is the big, was a huge factor, was a problem. If you're having blurred vision, if your eyes are running for no apparent reason, um, if you feel like you have a film over your eyes, jelly-like or anything, leakage or something like that, if you have pain around your eyes go deeper make them go deeper dig deeper get what you need so that you can keep your vision that's all that's it for me for today i just wanted to talk to you about that and tell you i'm following up on the temporary blindness and it is indeed uveitis spelled u-v-e-i-t-i-s and um it's important to have a healthy uvea and here's what they say a healthy uvea is essential for normal vision and mine was blurred it was jacked up i'm not playing i was like typos and stuff reading stuff that i typed over like what <laughs> when a d disease such as uveitis occurs it may lead to impaired vision or loss of vision in the next section of this booklet you will learn more about uveitis you know how can it affect the eye the inflammation associated with posterior segment uveitis can cause immune cells to enter the vitreous gel. This gel fills the back of your eye. Like I said, the leaking behind and the gel is behind the eye, creating what is known as a vitreous haze. 
which is the haze that caused blurred vision and that I wound up eventually seeing literally sitting on my eye. The haze can contribute to decreased vision. Uveitis can damage the eye and cause long-term long -term complications that reduce vision. While many people have only a single episode of uveitis, and let's pray, let's pray that's me, saints, help me out. A single episode, let that be it. Um, others may have recurrences over months to years. It is very important to receive medical treatment for the inflammation of posterior segment uveitis, and that's what I have. So leaving this thing to just do its thing, like you just like move all up into your eye zone, like it pays rent. Not hear the symptoms. Posterior segment uveitis, uveitis is usually painless, but I had pain in that eye. I also did something to my eye um, that may be the cause of the pain outside of the uveitis and I didn't mention it. I don't even want to tell you. It's so embarrassing. I be doing some stuff sometimes. It's ridiculous. So I had blurred vision and I was trying to put eye drops in my eye and I grabbed something that was the same color and didn't read it. Assuming that that's what it was. It was an eardrop and I put it in my right eye and it burned like a diggins. And maybe that's that. So, but the doctor said I'm okay. Like I'm good. I'm cool. So, your vision may be decreased and you may not see, no, you may see irregular floating black spots, floaters. Now, before the first episode of um, temporary blindness, earlier in that day, I saw two flashes of lightning in one eye. It was like, shoo, shoo. I was like, what? I closed my eyes. Like, do it again. It didn't happen again, but it was so dramatic you know I was like okay that was like the warning that I was about to have problems and she, she said why didn't you go to the hospital and if you have like flashes in your eyes or you see red dots or anything weird like that get your butt to the doctor it could be your eye it could be your brain it could be diabetes it could be anything and it could be a warning like something's about to happen and we don't want something to happen that we can't reverse or come back from all right so irregular floating black spots called floaters. More severe posterior uveitis affecting the retina can lead to significant loss of vision. Um, there are different ways to treat it. And again, you know, find yourself a good eye doctor, an ophthalmologist, not an ophthalmologist, an ophthalmologist. They're able to do a little more um, or a retina, retina specialist. And I'm so... I'm so glad I did. I, I feel confident in who I found and all of the testing that she did and the way that she communicated with me. You want someone that's going to talk to you and explain everything and tell you the truth and make you feel comfortable at the same time. Because no matter what the news is, there's always hope. And that hope begins with you. You got to know that, that God has you no matter what. And that's where I'm at with this. I I believe that God had everything to do with all of it, you know, in terms of <laughs> me taking the elevator to the wrong floor of a building and walking to an entire floor dedicated to the retina and walking in and going, have you guys ever heard of temporary blindness? I know it's nothing. I slept on my fist and I put pressure there. I Googled it and it said that's what that's what it is. And she's like, mm, no, no, you, you need to be seen. And let me tell you something. I don't have eye insurance per se, right? So I thought to myself prior to getting there that I would have to come out of pocket and I didn't know how I would afford all of this testing. And so I said to her, my guy, I don't have eye insurance. She says, oh no, this is a medical condition. So friends, if your eyes are acting up, it's no longer about, you know, eyewear or any of that kind of stuff, this is a medical condition and your insurance, your medical insurance will and should cover it. I'm Sonia Rue Ward. Thank you for stopping by. Check me out at www.soniaru.com. That's S-O-N-Y-A-R-U.com.